Good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope this week five seven. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, hope the week was good to you guys. Hope you got some dividends. Portfolio is looking good and things are on the up. Okay. Uh, we're going to be chatting about two things in this video. The main thing will be in the title, so there's no point in telling you that. You know what it is already. But the kind of supplementary thing is what I touch on. So I'm getting a kind of recurring question, a recurring kind of theme of inquiries online and offline about market movements, prices of players, etc. Right. So. The first thing is is mainly people saying to me like, oh, this guy's moving down, this guy's moving down, do you think they'll get back up, do you know what's going on, okay? Now, what you need to understand, right, is everyone who plays Football Index is just as smart as you and just as smart as me, right? No one, there's no, there's no fools, you know, we're all good football fans, we all know what works in football, we all know who's popular, we all know who's scoring goals, we all know who's in form. We all have access to the same information, okay? So sometimes it can be confusing when we all have access to this information. Why is someone who is quite obviously a stronghold or on the cusp of a really great period in the season going backwards rather than forwards, okay? Um, you might look at Pogba who post-split, I think it was like £8.12 or something like that. Um, you know, he took a nice yeah, eight twenty two, you know, and now he's down at seven seventy six, you know, he's taking a real backward step. And what you need to think is a couple of things, right? Number one, the things that make him appealing, right, are always there. They're never gonna go anywhere, right? But traders always are looking, like I tell you guys, always looking to be ahead of a curve, right? So what do we have on the horizon? We have the announcement for what's gonna happen in the summer, right? Now the speculation in the community is it's going to be something to do with summer transfers, okay? I've got a sneaky suspicion it might just be the media payouts get bigger throughout maybe, you know, a couple of months or there might be an extra payout if it's like, if somebody gets over 2,000 points because, of, you know, if somebody wins the media with something ridiculously high like that, they're probably going to be a marquee transfer or a big signing, you know, so I think it'll be something to that effect, okay? So for that reason, people will either be moving their money out of these safe holds that are good season on, season long, you know, you hold them, they'll be good, like Pogba, he's in the media all the time, and he's good for winning best midfielder and different things. But come summer transfers, is he going to move to Real Madrid? Who knows, but you'll have a lot of speculation, but whether it actually goes through or not is... Let's just say it's more unlikely than likely, okay? So what people will be doing is moving their money into players where a summer transfer is almost a guarantee. You know they're going to be moving. You know that they're going to be unsettled at their club. They are unsettled at their club. And they're just extremely more likely to make a transfer and thus you're then buying into that player. Once the news is announced, their value will then be, for everyone to see, you're then ahead of the curve. You know, you're not buying somebody. Um, I'll give you an example. So I bought Phil Foden pre-split in anticipation of the split and he was one of the top 10 certainly maybe one of the top five movers post-split I sold him the next day you know after the split and that's what I've done very deliberately so some other people will be thinking about players with the speculation we've got what this announcement is going to be with that kind of move in mind to just take a quick pump and dump on someone to take the rise take the media take this pardon me the market take the market for a ride all the way up and then crash someday to start selling them okay um the second thing as well that you need to think about with this, guys, okay, is you shouldn't be buying a player if you're not comfortable with the amount of money you're investing into them for their potential dividend yield, okay, over whatever period of time you're you're laying out for yourself, whether it be 30 days, a season, six months, you know, whatever it might be. Because a dividend yield is the only thing that you have any real control over predicting. Predicting someone's price movement, their capital appreciation, is a fool's game, you know, for you to look at somebody who's like, um, let's just look at the squad players, right, so looking at somebody like, uh, let's say Paredes here, who's 58 pence, if you buy him and say, right, okay, I'm going to sell Paredes in three months when he's one pound, for whatever reasons you might put around that, okay, is, is naive to think that the market is going to increase exponentially, not every player you buy is going to increase exponentially, players are going to decrease, okay, me, myself, personally, I'm quite a regular shopper in the decrease list. I like to find people when they're moving backwards rather than forwards because I know their time will come again. Depends on the player, whatever the reason might be. Champions League football, a transfer, they start getting back in a good vein of form. X, Y and Z, you know. So I'm never really, um, I'm never really, uh, what's the word? Disappointed is probably the best one for it. I'm never really disappointed to see a player move down two pence, move down four pence, whatever. Okay, now 
I'm going to take two sets back as I say this, right? If you're comfortable putting, let's just say, £250 into Neymar today, right? If Neymar moves backwards 10 pence, you still need to be comfortable with the amount of money you've got in play with him, okay? As soon as you've committed that money to a player, you then need to, the next thing you need to identify is your exit strategy and your estimated return, right? As soon as you've got that ironed out, as soon as I say that, some people buy some Neymar. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you've got that ironed out, then all these macro movements, these micro movements between periods, they shouldn't affect your strategy, okay? Now, as I say that, if you're, if, um, so let's say Mbappe here, he's down 1.25%, right? You might buy him, uh, this is actually my second take on this video, I had a work phone call, right? I'd use a better example, which was Van Dyke first time around, right? So let's say you bought Van Dyke on Thursday or Friday last week in anticipation of the Friday night game and everything else Van Dyke has on the horizon, right? If you bought him then for, let's say, £2.50, he's now £2.46. You're down four pence right away, okay? Forget about dividends and anything else, he's maybe earned you, right? Um, in that time period. So every time you look at your portfolio, he's, oh, he's minus like 2% or something like that, um, straight away. And that can then make you second guess, like, oh crap, shoot, is, is Van Dyke, if I missed the boat, is that him? Is he hit his ceiling? Is he not gonna move up anymore? And you start to think and think and think. And then when you see other people in the market who you might have been eyeing up, out of nowhere, taking a big rise, and you think, oh, sugar. I should have put my money into Max Ahrens or I should have put my money into Moise Keen or, you know, whatever. That's when you then make bad decisions because you go chasing rises that you didn't back at point A when you put the money into something, okay? What you can do, and if you want to look at Case File Ericsson, a video we dropped last week, you can see some great examples of just releasing some money out of there into something else that you reckon you can get a shorter term turn on to then reinvest back in, okay? So you need to be really clear, guys, in your motives for buying someone. And if someone's price is moving backwards and the strategy you've laid out for them has not changed one iota, it's because traders, other people have different strategies and they're on different timescales to you. And that shouldn't affect you because your exit strategy, your finishing line, whether it be in June, July, August, September, November, or even at the end of the next 30 days, you've not got there yet. You've only held them for five days. so. You know, just take a deep breath, take a step away from it, and uh, and just co constantly just reassess. Am I happy to have two hundred and fifty pound in Van Dyke? Yes, I am. Why? Because he still got the Champions League, he still got the Nations League. He's not gonna get a summer transfer, but who? You know, there's too much stuff between now and the summer anyway, to to really warrant me panicking. Because I promise you this: as soon as um, the Champions League comes around. Whatever Van, price Van Dijk is today is 246. See when they're playing Porto in the Champions League, and I forget off the top of my head if it's Tuesday or Wednesday, he will be £2.50 or more expensive. That is a fact, because he's still Virgil Van Dijk. He's still the same guy. He's still got the same pluses. And even when you get to the Nations League in the summer, he will be he will rise in price again. You know, it's just it is a fact because people will be drawn to that, okay? So I hope that kind of answers some of the questions um, that you've been kind of asking me. So to summarise, people have different strategies to you. People will also be moving money in anticipation of the news coming up. They want to buy people before the news releases in anticipation of what that news might be. Some people will be selling to withdraw money. That's why the footy today, the footy today is back 130 points because people have withdrew money out of the footy today. They've not put money in, okay? Um, and then some people will just want to sell players and have a big cash balance so that when the news does hit, they can target the exact right player to go and buy then and there. Okay, guys? Now, the topic I did want to chat about on the video, um, I've been running here for eight minutes, so I'm not going to babble on about it too long, but this is a massive week, guys, uh, in Football Index. Absolutely massive. I'm going to take it into my flash scores. So, for my portfolio, and this, port this um, list of fixtures here doesn't include anyone who I'm holding for the fantasy football segment that we're running now. Fantasy football segment, I'll be touching on that every Tuesday, okay? As far as I'm concerned for the fantasy football, I'll be running that as a match day. You know, you hear on, you know, if you watch like foreign football match of the day equivalents, you know, Serie A and La Liga, they talk about it being match day three, match day four, right? So for me, a match day is Tuesday to Monday, okay? So I'll be talking about the fantasy football thing every Tuesday, okay? So none of this stuff has any of my fantasy football things tied into it. This is down at my main portfolio where the other 90% of my money is, okay? So as you can see at the bottom, I've got 15 matches, 
I've got Chelsea playing three times, which is Eden Hazard. I've got a few of the teams just playing once, like Leipzig and Hoffenheim, Toulouse, Bordeaux. I've got Man City playing twice. We've got um, Juventus playing twice. We've got Liverpool playing twice. There's a lot of things going on, right? Now, see with the Champions League and the Europa League, if any of these first leg results, and you might want to cash your mind back into the last round, where Juventus went down to Atletico and Man U went down to PSG, and if you were holding in those players, you remember how rapidly some people's prices dropped like that off a cliff off the back of a negative first leg of result okay so you have to expect that guys if you're holding someone and their Champions League result goes against them short term your you're holding will drop okay having two amazing comebacks like Juventus and Man United did you know that's a gamble if you want to keep riding the train for that you know don't get me wrong but this is going to be a massive week for some of your holdings and you need to really accept that right now are you ready to go for the ride if you're not, what you need to do is sell them before kickoff. Okay. If you're happy to go along for the ride, and it's a decision you need to make now. Okay. Not retrospectively. Oh, I should have done that because you need to live with decisions. You make them and you live with them. If you make them, and then you've maybe made it for the worst. You, know, you sell somebody at two pound fifty and they end up being two pound sixty. You need to accept that that you've limited your losses, your potential losses, and you've moved on from it. Okay. Because once we get into leg two and then everything as well, guys, you can then buy somebody else who's maybe dropped in price and you know you need to you need to really look at this next week ahead you need to sit down with a bit of paper look at all your holdings who are you happy to take the risk on longer term shorter term is it anyone you might want to just take the hit on the now or just take the profit you've got in your hand one in the hand is worth two in the bushes they say and really assess it from there okay so again just a kind of look ahead guys answering some questions and some interactions i've had but um it's going to be a huge week especially in the title race as well liverpool and chelsea at the weekend man city away to palace that's not going to be an easy game um so, you know, so there's a lot of things going on this week guys in terms of the context of european football and domestic football in the premiership as well guys okay um there's also some news fluttering about that Hazard is transferred to Real Madrid might be concluded this week, okay? I am 50-50 whether I believe that to be true or not. Real Madrid are the type of club that would do that. I think Chelsea would allow their marquee signing to be announced as signing for somebody else while they still have the top four in the Europa League going on. I don't know. But what it does signal to me is I think the transfer is pretty much done and dusted. I think they're kind of testing the waters to see how the fans would react to that kind of announcement before they make it you know so if you're were thinking about buying Hazard because you want to see him as a Real Madrid player what that will do to your portfolio then I'd say it's almost a foregone conclusion at this stage okay guys thanks for tuning into the video guys if you're new to here subscribe like retweet share all that good stuff guys comment below get the interactions flying in guys I'd love to hear from you stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one take care bye bye